basically what BIOS is, it's fermented wheat bran is the main ingredients. You know, we do take um, barley grain, suspend barley grain from a local brewery here in Guelph because that is a byproduct that they have. Um, usually they'll give that to farmers and they'll spread it across their field to add organic matter, which is a type of fertilizer. And so we take that, we add it to our ingredients because it's a great source of nutrition for plants. And then we add things like kelp meal. Kelp meal is a beautiful source of plant available nutrients and nutrients that will break down slowly over time. It contains tons of minerals and vitamins because it comes from the sea. Um, salt water is a beautiful source of mineral content. You know, even the spring water that we used to drink, it's healthy because it has tons of minerals in it. So kelp meal is amazing. And then we add alfalfa meal. Alfalfa meal is such a beautiful fertilizer for plants. It contains a chemical called tricantinol. Tricantinol is a basically a growth hormone. So by adding a tricantinol extract to a rooting powder or you know any plant that you're trying to grow, you're gonna see amazing results come from that. And by just using ground alfalfa meal, you're going to get that benefit plus the organic matter, which is gonna break down slowly over time. And it's also packed full of your nitrogen, your phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, all the micronutrients that your plants are gonna need as well as tons of vitamins as well. And then we add ocean water minerals. So basically getting that mineral content from ocean water is amazing because a lot of the time plants are lacking mineral content and that is directly because we're not adding organic matter back to the soil. So when plants grow, they absorb minerals from the soil. If we don't put them back there, then those minerals are gone and they're lost and we have to now put them back in a different way. We also had insect brass. So if you've heard of worm castings, insect brass is very similar. It's just a, a little bit more of a potent form and it's in a drier powder instead of more of a composty feel. Um, I love it because it's packed full of plant available nutrients. It's also got your microbial content in there. So that just helps diversify the amount of microbes that we have in BIOS. And then we add EM ceramic powder. So EM ceramic is pretty interesting. It stands for effective microorganisms. So effective microorganisms are different bacteria and fungi and yeasts and photosynthetic bacteria, which is a very interesting bacteria that can actually help increase photosynthesis for your plants. So what they do, they basically ferment the ceramic with all of these different microbes. And then what they do is they heat it at a very high temperature and it basically vaporizes everything, but it does leave behind some of the vitamins, the minerals and the enzymes. So it is a really great plant food. So we add that in there for mineral content as well. We also add a really cool bacteria culture called BTI. The real name for it is Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis and it is a natural larvicide so you can use this to they mostly use it to get rid of mosquitoes but it's also extremely effective for fungus gnats so everybody has issues with fungus gnats it's just a factor of you know the top of the soil being too moist and attracts them they really don't harm your plants unless they're really young they're just a bit more of a nuisance but we add this in there to give you that extra protection against fungus gnats basically because this is gonna make your soil alive. So we add this natural larvicide as just an extra form of protection with the product, which kind of gives it that, you know, pest control ability as well, which is really interesting. And then we add a whole bunch of ground rock dust. So there's a few different types that we add in there because rock dust basically have different components of minerals to them. And a lot of these minerals basically, or these rocks come from, you know, glacial times when glaciers were basically moving across the earth and just like, crunching down rocks and just powder like basically turn them into powder and then they would form into these mineral rich rock deposits and that's what we mine to you know put on a lot of agricultural components actually we use it in a lot of industrial manufacturing um, but it's an amazing component in soil because like i said before minerals are the one thing that soil is usually lacking the most of because we're constantly just taking from it and stripping those away so I really wanted to make sure that BIOS was <clears throat> very mineral heavy because I want to put an emphasis on adding that back to your soil and that makes a huge difference as well. And then the other ingredients are simply just water and molasses. So molasses is actually surprisingly an amazing micronutrient for plants, an amazing fertilizer. And that's also a great food for microbes because it's very easy and quick to digest. So by adding that into the mix, it gives the microbes a basis for fermentation to occur and a food source that they can survive on for the fermentation period. And that is basically all the ingredients that we use. So a lot of things are food safe. 
Um, it's all organic as well, which is beautiful. So there's no harsh chemicals in it. There's, you know, no dangerous synthetics that are going into it. A lot of these ingredients are actually found in a lot of pet supplements as well. So, you know, we've had a few dogs eat an entire bag of our fertilizer before and they've been completely fine. There's no worries at all because it just acts as a probiotic and it is, you know, everything that's nutritious for humans as well because we are so directly connected. And then basically we put it through a fermentation process. So we mix all these ingredients together, get it to a certain moisture level, and then we just pack it into a sealed container. You want to get all of the oxygen out because these types of fermentation require an anaerobic environment. And that just means a lack of oxygen. And that's where these certain microbes thrive so they can ferment this product. So we pack it in there really tight. We seal it up completely. And, you know, the fermentation time can vary from seven days to 14 days, depending on the temperature. But we do like to ferment it at a lower temperature. So that's also a major difference with our products is that we ferment them around room temperature because that's the temperature that plants are actually growing at. So why wouldn't you ferment them at that temperature to make sure you're culturing the proper microbes that are actually going to interact with the plant in that environment? Um, a lot of microbial products that you see these days, they are manufactured at you know lab standards, basically not in terms of quality of production, but in terms of the standard of fermentation temperature. So the standard is 32 degrees Celsius because you get the highest number of microorganisms at that temperature. But at the higher temperatures, you do get a much higher number, but they're much, much smaller. When you ferment at a lower temperature, you get a smaller number, but they're much, much larger and they're more adapt to the environment that you're growing in. So it's much more effective by fermenting our products at a room temperature than a microbial product you're getting that's been fermented to lab standards at 32 degrees Celsius. Once it's done fermentation, we basically dry it completely. Once you dry microbes, they go into a state of panic and they know that they're gonna be stressed to the point of potentially dying. So they will basically start reproducing and putting out offspring. So the nice thing about that is that it becomes completely dormant once it's dry. So there's no living microbes on that actual product until you add water. Once you add water, it reactivates that second generation of microbes and those are what are coming back to life to actually help protect and feed your plant. And that's why you see the white bacteria culture. I was about to call it a fungi, but it is not. It is actually a bacteria culture called actinomycetes. And it is a absolutely beautiful bacteria culture that we need in all aspects of life. You know, we've found different antibiotics that we use day to day for humans from actinomycetes. It's an amazing antifungal and antibacterial. And the cool thing about it is, is that bacteria generally eats what fungi has decomposed first because it's much easier for it to digest. But with actinomycetes, it looks just like a fungi and it also acts just like a fungi. And then it can break down harder to digest substances that bacteria usually can't. So there's no need to be scared of this white layer. It is so healthy, completely normal. It is just a visible sign of a living, healthy soil ecosystem. And even if you see other colors, that's nothing to worry about. Generally, if you're adding a microbial product like this to your soil, there's going to have to be some balancing out happen while that system stabilizes itself again. And that's where you can get blooms of like red or blue or green microbes coming on the soil as well. And, you know, I like to think that there's no such thing as good or bad microbes. Like a lot of companies have been telling us, you know, apply these good microbes on your soil because it's going to beat out the bad guys. But the truth is that you need the bad guys as well. Like the yin and the yang, you need the good with the bad. And it's just a, it's just about balancing the two. And that's, you know, something I've really tried to focus hard on is that, you know, people get scared of the, you know, living soil because it's different from what they're used to or different from what they're used to seeing, but it is just the way that life has been. You know, we've been so far removed from it that we don't see that anymore, but it's so healthy and so important to see that and, you know, understand what it really is. So that's why I want to tell you guys, you know, it's nothing to be scared of. It's completely beautiful and natural. And, you know, I think the more I can explain that and kind of 
tell you guys and reinforce that it is nothing to be scared of and that, you know, it is how soils naturally exist. And, you know, once you use it on your plants, you'll see the difference in how they grow and, you know, how they look. It's crazy the difference that a living soil makes again. So, you know, I think this reinforcement of what the product is, you know, how it works, how we make it, a little more about what that white fuzz is and what other fuzzes are on your soil plus the results of seeing your plants thrive in that ecosystem you know it's just i think that's really going to help you understand and uh you know hopefully not be scared of this thing because it is amazing to see and it's such a cool little science experiment that you can do right in your own home